welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Samantha and these are my shelves and today I'm once again bringing you something a little bit different. In my booktube beauty video that I posted a month ago, a few weeks ago, I don't really know, I don't think time is real, I mentioned that I was in the process of trying to find an agent for my debut novel and if you follow me on bookstagram then you would know that I am now an agented author and <laughs> saying those words out loud is absolutely bananas to me that I am an agented author. It feels surreal. It feels like I'm living in a dream. This has been my dream since I was probably nine years old. That's I think when I started writing. To finally be here 16 years later, which again I'm only 25 so I'm still young but good god 16 years seems like a long time. It's just absolutely insane to me that I'm here and I can say that I am an agented author. So what I wanted to do today was to talk about my experience from the query trenches and also to maybe share some advice or some tips that I have on surviving the querying process because if you are a querying author you know it is absolutely brutal and soul-sucking and it's like getting punched in the solar plexus every single day. Every single time your email pings you're like Ugh. So I just wanted to talk about that a little bit and see maybe if there's some insight that I can bring to the conversation. As I said, I am an agented author. I recently signed with Joanna Castillo at Writer's House and being agented by someone at Writer's House is, if being agented was a dream come true, being agented by someone at Writer's House is a dream come true within a dream come true. I can't even believe that I can say that. I really love Joanna. I have loved working with her so far. She is absolutely wonderful. And our visions for my book just aligned perfectly. She has so much skill and expertise, especially in the editing world. And I know that she's gonna take my book really far and I am, I'm in really good hands and I just feel so lucky to be agented by her. Now, as far as my book goes, I'm not ready to share very much about it. And part of that is because my title is most likely changing and I don't wanna tell you guys that my title is going to be A when it might actually be B. We haven't, uh, it could still be the original title. It could be a different title. We're really not sure, but I love my title, but my agent brought up the fact that it has some flaws <laughs> and I won't go too much into it, but my title may be changing and um, I don't know what might change in my book. I'm doing one round of edits and most of the developmental bone should stay intact, but there could be things that change down the road. So I don't want to share too much in specific. What I will share is that I queried my novel as literary suspense, complete at 90,000 words. And my protagonist is a formerly incarcerated sex worker. And uh, the heart of this book is about relationships between sisters, relationships between mothers and daughters, and the idea of revenge versus remorse. Can you have both? Is that possible? Uh, and that's about all I'm going to give you at this point in time. I really love my book and I really love my protagonist. I think she's a badass and I think she's really unique in the literary space. So I really cannot wait to bring her into the world and bring my story into the world. But enough about me. I'm going to jump into my querying experience. After I finished my novel this year, I did multiple rounds of edits. I did about two rounds of self edits one round of developmental edits with beta readers, and then I also did a round of line edits with a beta reader who I trust a lot, who is also a writer, and I knew his opinion would be hugely helpful for me in getting agented, and I was right about that. He was absolutely invaluable to me throughout this process. Again, I went through four rounds of edits in total, and I know some people are gonna say that's not enough. I think you know how many rounds of edits your book needs. I tend to draft really cleanly, so I knew that I didn't need 10 rounds of edits. And what I mean by drafting cleanly, that's not me being like, hmm, I write great first drafts. It's nothing like that. It's just that I tend to do a lot of editing as I go and I'll fill in the blanks that way. So I will catch a lot of plot holes myself. I will go back and I'll be thinking about a scene that I wrote 20,000 words in when I'm at the 80,000 word mark and I'll go, oh, okay, I can fix that now. So four rounds of edits, yes, but I did so much editing throughout because that's just, that's my writing process and that's what I like to do. I started drafting my query letter in late September and then by early October 2022, I was ready to query and I found Query Tracker hugely, hugely, hugely helpful throughout my querying journey and I will talk a little bit more about them when I get to the tip section of this video, but I went through Query Tracker to help me keep track of who I was querying, what they were looking for, all manner of things. Again, that website is absolutely invaluable to you if you are an author looking to query your book. I did three batches of query submissions and in total I ended up querying 40 agents from October 2022 through January 2023. And that is a really short querying experience. I do want to say that I have a very different and in a way privileged perspective on querying. Uh, the novel that I became agented for was my first novel. I had never queried before and 
that's generally not the case. A lot of people will not get agented for their first novel. And again, I'm not saying that to pat myself on the back or to say, I'm a generational talent, I'm amazing. It's not about that at all. It's just to point out that my experience as someone who queried for a pretty short time on their first novel and got agented is going to be very different than someone who queried three novels, got agented on their fourth and, and did it for years. That person's going to have a very different perspective than I am and I just wanna be upfront about that, that I did have a pretty charmed querying experience, even if it didn't feel like that for me in the moment, which it certainly did not. I started drafting my query letter in September of 2022 and by October, early October, I was ready to begin querying. I wish I'd spent a little bit longer drafting my query letter. I will touch on this a little bit more later, but I was not happy with the first version that I sent out and I ended up sort of wasting my first batch, which was really disappointing. I ended up querying for almost exactly three months and I queried 40 agents in total. I had three full requests, one partial request that did not lead to more, and I ended up with two offers of representation. If you can hear this loud whoosh of air outside, there's an airplane flying overhead, and I don't know why they fly so low to my neighborhood, but they always do. Anyway, I think another way that my querying experience was a bit of an anomaly is that I did not end up signing with the first agent who made me an offer. This is totally anecdotal, but from what I've heard, it seems like a lot of people do tend to sign with the first agent who offers, and I ended up signing with the second agent. The first agent was really wonderful. I liked them a lot, I liked their vision, but ultimately I liked my agents just a little bit better, and that's why I decided to go with her. I got my first offer of representation in the first week of January, and then I had one full request still outstanding and about eight queries that I sent nudges on. And actually one of the queries that I did not on ended up being my agent. I had just sent her the query and I was totally not expecting any of those nudges to get back to me, but I got an email saying, you know, hey, we'd love to read it. And then within I think two days, she read my entire manuscript and then we set up a call for a holiday. I was just really floored that she read my manuscript that fast and again, made the time for me on a federal holiday to call me and talk and offer me representation. And again, part of it is just vision. I aligned with her vision better and I felt like she could take my career a bit further. Ultimately, I did decide to sign with her the next day and I officially became an agented author on January 17th, 2023. So that is the abbreviated version of my querying journey. And now I'm going to get into some tips and I don't wanna say tips and tricks that sounds so patronizing, but I'm gonna get into some tips and some things that I learned and also just share a little bit more in detail about some experiences that I had because that very short version probably makes you think, oh my God, she had it so easy. There was no rejection. Oh, oh there were rejections. I had a 10% request rate, which I can't tell how good that is. I, in the post pandemic querying world, I think it's, I don't know what the real request rate that you should shoot for is. Some people say if it's more than 5%, you're doing a good job. Some people say it should be more than 20%. I was exactly at 10% and I was relatively happy with that. Again, my first version of my query letter was not as good as it could have been. I think that did cost me. So your mileage may vary. But I did end up with two offers of reps. So even if my request rate is at the standard, below the standard, again, I don't know. I do think I did something right to get two offers of reps. So I've, I'm, a, I'm a very minor authority on this subject. I touched on Query Tracker a bit earlier and I want to come back to them again because I absolutely do not think you can query without Query Tracker. I have no idea how people do it. Specifically, I don't think you can query without the premium version of Query Tracker, which is $25 a year. Um, this is not sponsored. I don't think they sponsor people, but I do want to be upfront. Query Tracker did not pay me to say any of this. Um, it's $25 a year, which is more than reasonable and you gain access to all manner of reports. You can see um, over the last two years, how many queries um, an agent has replied negatively to and how many they've replied positively to, with a positive response being um, a request for pages, be it partial or full. You can see how long they take to respond to queries and to submissions. You can see timelines of when other users have submitted their queries and kind of get a feel for, did I get skipped over? Should I close it out with no response, et cetera, et cetera. I really, really, really recommend that you spend the extra $25 a year to sign up for Query Tracker because it was so helpful to me to have that premium version. I, I really would have been lost. Even, even if you don't wanna pay for the premium version, absolutely sign up for Query Tracker. It's hugely, hugely helpful. My second piece of advice is one that I thought was just common knowledge among querying authors, but I've seen more and more recently agented authors advising against it. Um, and saying don't query in batches. No, don't listen to that. Anyone who tells you not to query in batches is, 
leading you astray, I'm sorry to say. Oh, that rhymed, that was nice. Um, always, always, always query in batches. Um, I cannot believe there are authors out there telling people not to query in batches. That's, you're shooting yourself in the foot if you don't. Um, by querying in batches, if you're not familiar, it means if you find 60 agents that you would uh, like to represent you, do not send your query letter and the sample materials, et cetera, et cetera, to all 60 agents at once. Don't do it. Because if like me, you go back and you're like, oh shit, I can make this query letter better, but you've already sent it to every agent that's on your list, well, you've shot yourself in the foot. And that's why we do batches. That's why I started out with a test batch of eight. I didn't get responses. I didn't get any bites and I knew something was wrong and I went back to the drawing board. Had I queried every agent on my list at that point, I would have been in really hot water. Speaking as someone who had a pretty charmed experience uh, as far as querying goes, I think anyone telling you not to batch your queries had an extremely charmed experience, probably had a really high request rate and that advice is not advice I would give people. Always, always, always batch your queries. I don't care if your favorite TikTok author tells you not to. I don't care who tells, if your mother, query in batches, I'm begging you. You will thank me later when you have not run through your entire list of agents. Always, always, always do batches. Another thing I would recommend is go through, make your list of all the agents you would feel comfortable representing you, and then find the fastest responders, which you will know using Query Tracker Premium, out of that group and send to them first because you'll either get bites or you won't and you'll know if your package is working or if it's not. I had some fast responders in my initial batch. I wish I had included more because if you send to someone who's very slow or often just doesn't respond, whether it's a positive or a negative response, um, it's not gonna help you because three months are gonna go by and you're gonna be like, hmm, I wonder if they've read it yet and you've lost time and maybe your materials aren't working and you should be going back to the drawing board and you're kind of setting yourself back. Third piece of advice, and this is one I really wish I had known before I started querying, make a separate email for it. Do not tie it to your main email because you need that space. You do not need to be like me at 11 a.m. on a Wednesday doing your job and your email pings and it's a rejection because it just deflates you for the rest of the day and maybe you're not in the headspace for a rejection. Maybe you're trying to do something else that weekend. Maybe you need a mental break. And having control over whether or not you are seeing responses, I think is really great for your mental health. So I would create a separate email and check in with yourself before you check that email box. Make sure you are in the right headspace for it. I would really, really, really recommend setting up a separate email so that you can control when you are seeing rejections. And speaking of rejections, my fourth piece of advice is to get comfortable with it. You're gonna get rejected a lot. You are gonna get rejected a lot more than you get a request for materials. And that sucks and that's brutal. And I say that as someone who really struggles with rejection. This was an absolutely brutal process for me. I'm extremely sensitive. I'm more sensitive than the average person to rejection. And for me, querying 40 people and getting a positive response from four, that's awesome, that's great. But I got a negative response or no response from 36 of them and that sucks. And that kills your confidence sometimes. There was one time in particular, it was 9.30 on a Sunday night and I was querying, my girlfriend was here and I queried a really fast responder and she responded within like 10 minutes with a one line email saying like, thanks, but not for me. And it just crushed me. And that goes to the point of please have a separate email for this stuff so you don't get a rejection at 9.30 on a Sunday night. And I started crying and I had a little bit of a breakdown because I hadn't had any requests for material at that point. And then the next day I got my first partial request. So that goes to show it can turn around really fast, but you're gonna get a lot of rejection and it's going to hurt and it's going to break your heart. And there is no way around it other than to get comfortable with it. My fifth piece of advice is kind of advice and kind of just an observation. I'm seeing more content creators who are authors advising against querying widely. I think the traditional wisdom at one point was once you query 100 agents and you don't get an offer, shelve it, move on to the next thing. And I've seen some author content creators say, no, stop at 50, no, stop at 30. And I think this is such a, your mileage may vary kind of situation. By the time I stopped querying, I had a list of 84 agents who I would have felt comfortable representing me. And that's someone who was querying a suspense novel. And I think that I had a broader pool to fish from, so to speak, than someone querying YA sci-fi. So your mileage may vary there, but the wisdom that, no, there's not more than 50 agents who could adequately represent your book, I think is kind of bullshit depending on the genre you're writing in. I genuinely would have felt comfortable with any one of those 84 agents representing me. They were all legitimate agents. They worked at legitimate agencies. They had made publication deals and I would have been happy with any of them. So anyone who's telling you, no, you hit 40, you need to stop. It's not gonna work out. If you still have agents on your list, go for it. 
Um, I would say, honestly, run through the list. If it's 100, query 100. If it's 50, query 50. Your mileage may vary, but don't stop at some arbitrary number. As long as there are still agents out there who represent your genre and seem like they would be a good fit and are not a fake agent, send it to them. My sixth piece of advice is it is okay to query someone if they're not a 100% match for your book. What do I mean by that? Obviously, do not query your YA fantasy book to someone who only represents adult romance. You're wasting your time and theirs. If you're writing a suspense novel like me and you find an agent who likes, um, I don't know, suspenseful thrillers, they, they specify that in their manuscript wish list or on their website, then I would say go ahead and query them. I think I am going against the grain by offering this advice. There are a lot of people who say like, no, 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 only query people who are a 100% match. And I think it's hard to find 100% matches. And the first agent who made me an offer, my manuscript was not a 100% match for what she was looking for. It was about an 80 to 90% match, but I took a little leeway. And later on in our phone call, she told me, you know, yeah, this is a little bit more literary than I usually represent, but I still took the plunge and queried her. So I think that if you are like an 80 to 90% match for what someone is looking for, and again, you're within their genre and their age range specifications, go ahead and query them. The worst thing that happens is no, but you might end up in a situation like me where, yeah, it's a bit outside of the agent's wheelhouse, but they liked it enough that they wanted to read more or they wanted to make you an offer. My seventh piece of advice is do not query until your book is done. Again, if you query fast responders and you get a positive response, someone might email you in 12 hours and say, yeah, send me the full manuscript. And if you're not done with it, you're gonna look like a real dumbass. <laughs> Quite frankly, don't query your book until it's done. Don't query it until you feel like you've edited it as well as you can. Edited it? God, I hate saying that. It's like a tongue twister and it shouldn't be. But make sure that the novel that you have, you would feel comfortable submitting to an agent. Piece of advice number eight, make sure your query is actually ready to go before you send it. Make sure you are a hundred percent happy with it. Otherwise you end up like me and you burn eight to 10 queries and you go back to the drawing board and you come up with a version that's so much better, but you've already run through some of the agents you would have liked and you gave them a query letter you weren't totally happy with. And this is hard because querying is a very different art form than writing a book. It's more about sales than it is about literary acumen. and it, it's not a skill I totally possess. I really struggled with my query. Make sure that your query letter follows the industry standard guidelines. Don't try to get cute. Don't try to get funny. Now is not the time to bend the rules, I would say. Odds are you are not the exception to the rule and don't shoot yourself in the foot by trying to be. And again, maybe that's harsh, but I think the standard is the standard for a reason. Follow the format of hook, book, cook, with hook being hook them on your premise, book being tell them about your book, and cook being, who are you? Give them your author bio. If there is one rule I think you can break, it is the one about word count. Uh, the general length of query should be about 250 to 350 words. Mine ran a little long at about 400. Obviously don't write them a thousand page query, but I think if you run a little long or a little short and your query is strong, it can work. Um, again, I got two offers of prep, so obviously my query letter was doing something right for me <laughs> to get them hooked and get them interested enough. Don't start your query with a rhetorical question. Don't dump 18 names on them. Don't give away your big plot twist. There are so many wonderful resources on the internet in general and on YouTube about how to write a good query letter. And if you're just beginning your querying journey and you don't know where to start, I recommend that you consume all of that content. Writing a query letter is extremely hard and it takes a lot of fine tuning. It's a strength that a lot of writers don't have because it's not about writing anymore. It's about selling yourself and two completely different skill sets. And my ninth and final piece of advice is if you get an offer of representation, take advantage of the 10 to 14 day grace period that the offering agent will give you to reach out to other agents. Don't immediately settle on the first agent. It could be that they are the perfect fit for you and you are so happy and you do end up signing with them. And that is wonderful. But there's always the chance that the real perfect agent is the one that you're going to nudge and read your manuscript in two days and makes you an offer on a holiday, <laughs> in my case. Your perfect agent might still currently be reading your full manuscript and maybe you nudge them and they make you an offer too. Don't always feel like you have to go with the first agent and don't feel like you have to be loyal to them. I don't say that to be cruel. And again, the initial offering agent for my book was wonderful. I cannot say enough great things about them. Anyone would be lucky to be represented by them. But I ended up finding a slightly better fit in that grace period. So don't immediately go, no, 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 no. I, I don't want the grace period. I'll sign with you right now. 
take that time. I am really glad that I did and I think you will be too. And any agent who would bristle at giving you that grace period is not an agent you want to work with, period. So what happens now? I'm out of the query trenches. I'm an agented author. What are the next steps? I go on submission, which is when my agent starts contacting editors with a pitch letter and getting them interested in my book and hopefully buying it. When you go on submission, the shorthand for that is on sub. I'm not on sub yet, but I may be in March, which is really exciting and really fast and crazy. I have one round of edits to do and I will be working on that over the next few weeks. And then from there, we'll eventually go on sub. My agent is sharing her sub list with me so I know what editors and what imprint she's interested in and it's it's a very collaborative process. I don't have that much input because I'm not making that much input. I really trust my agent. She worked in editing for about 15 years and she knows her stuff. So in Joanna, I trust. In my agent, I trust. But she's still involving me in those decisions and telling me who she's submitting to and why and why she thinks they'd be a good fit. And we had a call where she asked me, you know, what are some books that you feel were really well done and really well marketed that you think could be like somewhat of a match for you? And it was really wonderful to have that, um, to have that level of input. And it was a great way to look at my bookshelf because I'd never thought about that before. Your agent may keep the sub list from you. They may just tell you, hey, I'm submitting to this imprint, but not tell you the editor in specific. I feel really lucky that mine is a collaborative one and a very open one. I like to know what's going on. I'm I'm nosy, so she didn't tell me I'm sure I'd be asking, but it means a lot to me that I'm able to be involved and if I wanted to have input, I could. But again, I'm not the expert here. She is. It's it's like a football game where you're like you're like at the you're like at the 10-yard line. You got to get to the end zone. I think that's how football works. I'm I'm more of a baseball girl, but I couldn't think of a good baseball analogy. It's it's like the bottom of the ninth, two outs, runners on the corners. You know, I trust her to get that runner on third to home plate and score the winning run. Anyway, now that I just outed myself as a baseball nerd. So that's where I'm at now. I'm still very early in the process. And I also want to say it's very possible that I could do what's called dying on sub. I could put my book on submission with my agent and no one bites and I don't get an editor and I have to shelve this. Obviously, I very much hope that's not the case. And I have faith in my agent that she saw a book she could sell and that's what we'll do but it's a thing that happens to people and it's worth mentioning that this isn't the last hurdle i think being agented is the biggest hurdle i think i read somewhere that you are more likely to get into harvard than you are to get agented which is insane <laughs> but there's still other hurdles to clear and there's still a lot more to go on this journey but it's a journey that i'm really looking forward to embarking on again this has been my dream since i was a kid and to finally be here in a way it feels like it still hasn't sunk in i think the most celebratory thing i did was right after docu signing my contract i was like i got an agent and i danced in my pajamas in my office because it's, it's like 11 a.m and i work from home so i was not dressed <laughs> but yeah, in a way, it still it still hasn't sunk in, and part of me thinks it won't until I actually get a book deal. I trust in my agent, I trust in my ability as a writer, and I trust in the ability to have all of this come together. And I'm really excited to go on submission. I do want to mention that as it stands right now, today, which is January 29th, 2023, we are not planning to submit to any HarperCollins imprints to support the strike. If you're agented, that's a decision that you'll make on your own. That's not something I want to do. I want to support the strike, but it's very possible that between now and when I go on submission, negotiations could resolve and the strike could be over. Um, at which point, yes, I would submit to HarperCollins, but as it stands right now, I will not be crossing the picket line. Thank you so much for joining me for something a little bit different. The other side of me, I'm a reader, but I'm also a writer, and it's really wonderful to be able to share that hobby and that passion. Whatever title my book spawns into existence with, I will be so excited to share her with you. She was my baby for three years. <laughs> and she's still my baby. She's not over yet. But I wrote her alone in an office for three years. I got 40,000 words into her twice and started over. So I, yeah, this has been a novel of blood, sweat, and tears, and it's still coming to fruition, and it's just been an absolute dream come true. And I'm just so grateful to be here and to be on the other side of querying and looking ahead. If you have any questions about querying or you want more details on my experience, anything like that, um, please don't hesitate to ask me. I really wish that I had a support system when I did this instead of just me and some YouTube videos. So if there is any way that I can be of use to you as a querying author, please don't hesitate to reach out. I am more than happy to share my experiences and give insight wherever I can because I know querying is a very isolating and lonely and soul-sucking process. 
If you've made it this far, please go ahead and like, subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know if you're a writer. Let me know if you want to be traditionally published. If you're looking at self-publishing, do you want to query? How are you feeling about all of it if you are querying? Thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.